How do I decide the window thing again? Oh wait, yeah, it's right. Hmm. You're live streaming to the Chocolate Hammer account, right? Yeah. Okay, so currently I have to do this first, then do this. Okay, now does it show the game window? Okay. Uh, I've got an ad, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm seeing the game. Uh, I've got it still has the thing where like there's the yellow circle around your cursor. No, oh, how do I fix that? Also, I can hear myself on the stream, but I mean, I guess that's ideal. Actually, never mind. What am I talking about? How do I do that? <laughs> Is there some preferences thing that I can do? Yeah, it should be in the Procaster preferences. Find the window. Where the hell is the Procaster window? Procaster main panel. Where the hell is it supposed to be? Like the, I think the settings window is visible when you start before you start the stream. Yeah. Oh well, next time I get. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let also post it on our Twitter. website. So, so like our website is automatically linked to Twitter and stuff. So we can just. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, the problem, like as soon as you start streaming, is that you can suddenly open a web page because then you're bored. <laughs> So wait, do we want to uh, like announce that we have like that? Hey, come to EGX Rest. If you are a backer, we have special surprises for you. Yeah, sure. I mean, you might as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've already said it live actually. So, if you are back, our special surprises for you. They're quite special. Remarkably surprising. <laughs> Like, but has Steam started downloading something? Because I suddenly am very lagging. What the heck is No. Is it actually close Steam? But then I realized that. It's 3 p.m. GMT, right? Uh, yeah, 3 p.m. GMT, right? Yeah, yeah. My lord. Oh yeah, by the way, I also have... Oh yeah, that's why. Oh, so the Nick was updating Steam, that's why. Thanks. Oh yeah, Nick, I also had a really... Uh, at least I think it's really good idea for the website background stuff. So I'll, I'll draw something and then share it with you. I think it's going to be pretty good. Even though it's only me that's saying. Now, Mick, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Cool. You heard of what I said about the website stuff, right? The website stuff? What? Yeah, so I have a sort of when I was designing those buttons. Yeah, I had an idea about the website design as well. So I'll share it with you and okay. we can discuss how feasible it is. I think it's pretty like it's not that okay, much cool. of work, but yeah. Okay. I think I think it would make us look legit, basically, you know. Like if we'll have a website like those gone home guys, then people would take us seriously. Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I assume those four viewers are just us, right? I don't think anybody's here. Probably, Pre probably just us. Yes. I don't think it counts you, so there's possibly one person watching. Yeah. In which case, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
John Doe 1 says hello. I can smell your soul. For a second there, I didn't know if you were kidding or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually tested. I, I just wrote a test message. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I posted the link to, from Kickstarter and I'm going to post it on Twitter as well. Okay, cool. so, let, so let's just uh, sit here as our millions of fans tune in. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, um, yeah like EG exist. It's going to be our first convention, so there's probably going to be like lots of mistakes and stuff. At least I'm pretty excited about like what it is like to actually go, like, have a lot of people play your game. Yeah, of course. Hey, our first visitor is Godwin. Like, is that like a riff? Mm -hmm. Wow, like we. This is it, it, it's actually game. possible. <laughs> People were actually named Godwin before the law merged. Oh, <laughs> it's just possible that this person was too. <laughs> Hi Godwin. So yeah, this is just uh, yeah. We are showing you the temple levels. Uh, this is like never before seen stuff. Here. So you so you're seeing very early concept stuff. In fact, you judging by how quickly you came in, you may actually be the first non-developer to see this stuff. Yeah. Close up. It is hot off the. Um, and think that one through. What does it to do? Yeah. Edit. So then we have the other stuff. You'll be able to go inside the temple and explore it. But for now, yeah, this is just. Yeah, we'll have other levels, but let's get let other viewers come in. Hey viewers, like if you are here, just say hi in the chat. Ask us questions, and we'll keep on replying while we are also showing off these new levels for you. Mm -hmm. I have to say, like, I I really appreciate the. Uh, yeah, uh, I I well, one thing that I, I don't know why I like it quite so much, but I, I like that the the first two columns there are sort of. Uh, so I, I, I like a, I like the the way the back two columns just sort of look. I I I'm perhaps not as articulate as I could be right now, so maybe I'll <laughs> step yeah. back a moment and. Yeah. Kind of parse that huh. a little more clearly. Hey, giant is here. Hi, Giant. Here, my own we have celebrity viewers. viewers at this moment. Mm -hmm. So hey, yeah, let's kind of lay off the alcohol, and you'll be able to think a lot more clearly. <laughs> Either well, like lay, lay off, off it. the two and a half hours of sleep. <laughs> Either lay off it completely or drink a little more. <laughs> Yeah. One of those. The, After the stream the is over, I'm going wrong. right back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half hours is probably not enough to make a productive run of this day. Hey, it's not a couple of rest or nothing. Yep. Yeah, this is oh. actually going to be heavily populated by NPCs. Because this is the place of the scenario where... Did they actually where, pull apart uh, over on Rutscar? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, right. So what I was saying was that this area is... Uh, going to be populated by a lot of NPCs because there's a scenario here where you as a priest are supposed to distribute food to the people who have gathered in front of you. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of, uh, yeah, there, there, there will be a lot of NPCs there. Uh, populating the NPCs is the next step. Like if we, in the next month's update, we'll actually talk about how we design levels and stuff. So in that update, we'll tell you how we go through the process of uh, making a level and then populating it with NPCs, then adding animations and stuff like that. Uh, Ross, I actually wonder, can I actually go to the slums from this exit? Or do I have to like forcefully yeah. reload? No, it's fun. It works. I had it before. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So this is the area which you have probably seen last time, but this time it's new and improved. So, for example, this building right here. Oh, wait. 
you can see where I'm pointing at. But like this, this is this building right here, where the player character is standing. This is new compared to the previous stuff. And we also tweak the color of places a lot. Uh, so let me show you some more examples. Yeah, there you go. There's a smaller temple here now. Earlier there was just a nondescript house. So we're going to add a little scenario here, which I won't tell you because spoilers. But yeah, we're going to add a little scenario here that's going to be interesting. Somebody's phone is. Yep, those are Naga. Yeah, these people. There you go. Hi, werewolf. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, these are Naga. I, I, think, sure I think. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, I, I continue. I, that was I had related point, so continue. Okay, yeah. So yeah, these are nagas. Like, if you have not been keeping like keeping up with the game, these are another species that uh, like there's a lot of conflict in between humans and naga, and like a major portion of the game is centered around this conflict. Right. There's kind of obviously there's a resource conflict because this is. One of the, the major, the root of most of Bimmer's problems is that they don't have enough food to go around. And so when you have a bunch of immigrants to your city that, you know, you don't think of as your people and that are incidentally larger and require more calories to exist than humans do and could probably tear your head off or otherwise kill you, or at least they look like they might be able to do so, and that's all you really need to know, then rivalries tend to develop. <laughs> yeah, well, there are already uh, very little trees, I guess you can probably see, because the whole place is, uh, the game is situated at times where there is a uh, drought. Oh yeah, the Nagas don't exactly like dress in pants and stuff like that, like us, because like, they don't, like, pants yeah, in them. Yeah. When was the last time you saw a snake with a is it, who would have benefited from the addition of pants? <laughs> I think pants would be pretty weird. It would have to be a pant, <laughs> like just one. <laughs> <laughs> a singular pant. That might be a sock, like just a very big sock, actually. Yeah, he just pulls a giant stocking up. Yeah. Yeah, but then, but then they would like they would have to buy two, and then they would feel resentment towards humans because they would always have to buy a pair. So yeah, that is actually the source of the conflict that we have going on. Nagas have to buy exactly. We <laughs> it's canon now. <laughs> oh, it, it, just also to be clear, uh, once the game launches, all of these NPCs will not be facing in the same direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for that one depressed man who apparently was really disappointed to whatever is off to the left. Yeah, this is the this is the contrarian kind of hipster kind of person who's facing the other direction. He's like, yeah, whatever. You guys are looking at something cool, but yeah, I'm not. Yeah, at this moment, these people are actually just like not animated at all. They're just playing their idle animations. So yeah, yeah, we'll actually explain this in the next month's update. Or rather, Mick will explain. And we nod supportively that how and that why these people yeah. first stand at the at their idle poses and then they have their uh, then they later they'll be animated and so on. Yeah, location mm -hmm. as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I also have some. I, yeah, the later, location. I'm actually. Oh, go on. Yeah, later we'll also show you the improvements made to the world map that will require loading an, up another chapter. So yeah, what we have is something like akin to old school. Uh, hmm, Ross, I think we might have just noted, found a bug here. What happens is that like, oh, when I go, happy. yeah, when I go over there, I think I spawn at the exit, which automatically transports me back here. Oh, I thought I fixed that. Yeah, it must be second happening. Yeah, some like it's just probably a pixel or something like this a little bit. It sounds like something st the Stanley Parable would do. So it's not all bad. It's a method 
or I can never truly leave the Bimra songs. They stay with for a lifetime. time. Okay, so when we, um, when we played Fallout 3 for spoiler warning, we noticed that in no in the vault, like in the purification area, no less, when you enter, uh, there's like a door on the far left and a door on the far right into the main chamber where like the climaxes of the game take place. And if you enter the door on the left, you spawn the door on the right. And if you enter the door on the right, you spawn the door on the left, on the inside. <laughs> yeah, I think what this meant was that... And this was in the finished release. <laughs> Yeah, even the QA testers were so sick of the finale that they decided to not play it at all and ignore it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so yeah, Godwin is asking us, so are all the areas laid out and planned already or is there stuff to lay out? Yeah, we have general outlines of the area al areas already. Like the, the hard part now is to actually draw them and polish them so they look better. But yeah, we have area, we, we have uh, fixed world maps till chapter 4 so that's like 60% of the game which we have world maps for actually like considering uh, and this stream takes oh, me to okay. the good old days where like it was the final day of the kickstarter and our stream was basically people discussing naga physiology <laughs> let's let's be frank here. Specific aspects of Naga yeah. theology. <laughs> yeah. Specific yeah. arresting <laughs> details. <laughs> Actually, I think part of it might be my problem. I I'm tweeting things like this. That would explain something. <laughs> just, just to make it interesting for you guys. <laughs> Look, there is only one thing in this world at which I am an expert, <laughs> and it is Naga reproduction. <laughs> yeah, because whatever Ratskan is going to say is is becoming canon anyway. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think the question in all our minds is: eggs or not eggs? Or actually, what size of eggs will be a better question? Um, I, I don't think that this is really sound biologically speaking, but I like the idea that their eggs are actually rel like relatively small, like duck egg sized. Okay. Yeah, actually, but like, again, I, I, I wouldn't commit to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I haven't thought of that in particular. But yeah, I would imagine, like, since there is a lot of rivalry, like, like people, like more, many civilized kind of people would probably frown on eating naga egg omelets, but like in like you know warrior kind of sense, like oh yeah, I am so macho and stuff like that. They would probably. I mean, like, say oh, they're probably yeah. poisonous. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they could also be poisonous. Yeah. I would actually make them bigger a, just because. Good idea. Yeah. I would make them uh, bigger just so they are visible easily on the the game screen, you know. Well, poison eggs is an incredible biological imperative to uh, keep your species alive, especially if you lay eggs and leave them. Okay, thanks, Godwin. Yeah, Godwin, bye. <laughs> mm hmm. Bye. Okay. Bye. Yeah, go ahead. Ross. I mean, it, it is established that Naga themselves, like their at least their entire bodies, are not poisonous, uh, okay. because parts of the Naga, like the liver, are actually eaten in yeah. some contexts. Because it's believed that they give that they grant special properties. Yeah. So they're hocked in back guys. Mm, this is weird. Why do we have a missing polygon for this place? Seems like there should be one. There isn't. The there, there are certainly rumors, or well, uh, of course, amongst humans that Naga are eating the humans, and that's why there are so many of them still around. Uh, I don't really think, like, out of character, there's necessarily much to those, but I try not to actually explicitly say whether or not that's the case, because a lot there, there's a lot of ambiguity for the player between what people are saying is accurate and, well, you know, what actually is. Yep. There's no real certainties, especially when things are that bad. Yeah, yeah that's actually one thing that uh, 
Okay, that that that's very interesting. What Werewolf just said, like I would assume there are naga sects that eat babies or just humans in general. Because the problem is, as soon as you have something that somebody who eats babies, that's like the point of no return, right? Nothing we could do <laughs> as writers would make them redeemable from there. <laughs> like I don't know, evil that's babies. You think me of something babies. that. Like all the babies were racists, <laughs> and like were forming yeah. uh, a mob <laughs> to go round up all the naga, and the naga were, were like, "Oh no!" And the only thing they could do in self-defense was eat the babies. In in six years, babies were up to be the staff of the <laughs> All the babies. I mean, you know, it's would still not do. the good thing to do. It's the renegade option, sure. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that's really weird. Like, yeah. the paragon option is that you spare the babies, and then you turn around, and the babies narrow their eyes and charge at you, and you dodge out of the way with the quick time event, and they fall off of a ledge to their doom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, you guys give lots of great suggestions for this game, man. This could be the best RPG ever. Yeah, I think yeah. Go on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Janet. I I I I wanted to suggest that because baby that's, baby that's what it all, all always boils down to. All the babies will grow up to be Hitler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the problem. Because like, even as we were saying it, like on one hand, eating eggs doesn't like while it's quite evil. Like, but you have to think about it. Like, you have to think that okay, naga are actually sentient species, and like their eggs are defenseless. But like when you are eating babies, since like we are human, wait a minute, it's the same problem again. I can walk up and then the exit. No. Yeah, there's a double yeah for it for an instant. That's yeah. But yeah, whatever. That's easily fixed. No big. Yeah, I might actually yeah. Let me just. <laughs> it literally. Oh. oh my god. I'm now <laughs> furious. Like how did that slip by? I I must have on. On forward one direction and I'm back the other. Hang on a second. Let me just uh, show you guys the new and improved world map. So I'm at unrest build. I open dress and default protect ML. I change this to what's the V houses one right? V houses one. That's our level right? Yeah. So I start a new game now and. They said so this is our old combat stuff. The guy that isn't with breaks up. I think they mean Ross or Mick. Not sure. Which one? Is it me? Yeah, is it the one that sounds like a James Bond villain, or is it the Canadian guy? Wait, who 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 sounds like a James Bond villain? You do, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's you, Mick. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Score. Yeah, I was going to actually say like the the person who sounds like Vladimir Putin, but then I thought maybe that is too irredeemably evil. So I went with James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is yeah, this is the so new thing that we have. That'd be me. Yeah, this is the new thing that we have in the world map stuff. I yeah, don't don't bother with the markers just now. But what we do have is that. Uh, so right now you have just this is the start of the this chapter. So you just have this one uh, thing explored. So now as you explore the area, like you you will reveal more places. So now there's there's a bunch more. So yeah, what this and you can also hide this. So, if you are a person who is more like they want to see the actual map and figure out from where to where to go, you know, then you can do this. Otherwise, you can just enable the overlay if you are a casual or like just want just if you're confused and like you know don't want don't want to figure out where what person is that kind of thing. That's some good box copy right there, Arvind. That that's that that's really great outreach. <laughs> we've we've designed our game so it's accessible even by the filthy casuals. <laughs> we'll hold your hand in all that bullshit. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, we we yeah, are completely down, yeah we are completely hitting the bingo card right now. We have insulted a world leader, like a leader of a nation, and we have we have called and we have got the whole PC gaming master race kind of debate going on. And earlier we had the rule thirty four thing going on. So yeah, pretty much yeah we have filled the entire bingo card. Yeah. Really, everything that's wrong with the internet, we're, we've got it all here, right, right now, folks. Yeah. There's no reason to go anywhere else on the internet today. <laughs> I mean, the uh, the end of every discussion is always Hitler. We already reached that, so. Yeah. I think we're done. We're just sort of we're just stalling for time at this point, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the legend of Gilgal thing is interesting because on one hand, yeah, that is a very Nice thing to do, but on the other hand, most of our levels aren't really like in Legend of Grimrock. The levels and like navigating them is a big puzzle and challenge kind of thing in in itself. <laughs> but here, they're not I so much. I wonder how many people started the Legend of Grimrock with the draw your own map mode because they were super excited, and then like five minutes in a torn piece of graph paper later, they're like, "Why would I think this was a good idea?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I actually I, I started with draw your own map mode and what ended up happening was just that I stopped using maps and just started trying to like memorize my way through it. Yeah, that's funny yeah. thing, I never finished that game. Yeah, yeah, same thing funnily enough. Like I I, quick, I gave up when uh, the first new set of tiles comes in. I'm not sure but like like you, the first four or five levels are the same tile set, right? But uh, yeah, drawing it in the game would probably not work. Yeah, but yeah, like in that case, if you are like so hard, you can just not click the world map button. You know, like having a difficulty level where just the world map button is hidden, that kind of yeah does not really make sense. I don't know. I am also super bad at drawing maps like once I ran a Pathfinder dungeon that I created and I had another guy with some graph paper do a map and he kind of had to be talked into be taking the responsibility and when we were done I looked at it and his map was more accurate than my map <laughs> like the map I was running the adventure from that I had drawn my notebook this map was more accurate to the dungeon. Hey, I think Rocketeer just missed. Yeah. Hi, Rocketeer, anyway. But yeah. yeah, we were, you know, funnily enough, the, this meeting where we discussed the idea of actually uh, re rolling, not re rolling, but rather. Uh, what is it? I just completely forgot what, what I was meant to say. But yeah, uh, asking you again about what time and then maybe rescheduling the the battle meet some more so people are more available but yeah we'll figure something mm -hmm. out don't worry yeah. oh, and just in, to complete the whole we also have an inventory in case you are a new viewer so yeah inventory it will be full of stuff and we also have a journal with like a lot of categories and we have a codex not the codex of ultimate wisdom but there, there will be a lot of stuff here, and like the people, the backers who have, uh, the backers who have got custom stuff, they'll have their stuff in this codex right here. Uh, yeah, that's that's actually part of chapter four. Yeah, the the, the yeah, we are big fans of Gabriel Knight three over here. It it, it forms a definitive yeah. moment in our lives. Especially that cat puzzle. Yeah. There's actually a uh, part in the prologue where you have to make a disguise um, just using honey and cat hair. But it's mostly just to train you Valve style for the boss fight later on, which makes principal use of honey and cat hair <laughs> mustaches. Yeah. And we also have this, uh, which is uh, the... A uh, thing that that is kind of a uh, cross between achievements and RPG style abilities, where as you play through the game, like the, you will get 
these traits that are your character uh, and depending on how you play you will get different traits and they might change uh, what happens so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice way to uh, i think at least i think it's a nice way to combine the the traditional achievement kind of thing with the the rpg style traits of your character so yeah it, it kind of quantifies what you've done in a chapter yeah Yeah, so these three traits are the ones you start with. So you don't start with a completely blank slate. So this is a thing which we, uh, yeah, they they affect. I think uh, in very little places, not uh, every single conversation. But yeah, I think in a couple of places there might be subtle changes depending on. Yeah, because this is a like this is one thing which we do haven't exactly like uh, like set in stone yet. As in, how much of this thing will they affect? Hmm, funny, I thought this was supposed to be a talk, but okay. But yeah, yeah. What Rod says is actually right. Here. Conversation and plot choices give you traits that are mutually exclusive. Oh, and by the way, uh, do any of you guys live in uh, the England or somewhere nearby in the UK? Because if you do, we have uh, yeah some nice news for you. We are uh, going to be at EGX Res, which is a show that's uh, run by Eurogamer and Rock Paper Shotgun, and we'll be presenting our game over there. So we'll be on the show floor. Come say hi. We'll also have, and if you are a Kickstarter backer. Uh, So we'll have special swag for you. So yeah, if you need yes. any incentive, the entire team will be there, I think, except me. Yeah, and Ross. And Ross, right? Yeah, yeah. The capitalists come, you know, as like the James Bond villain would say. <laughs> right. I would yeah. love to see a Canadian James Bond. Yeah, the March two thousand fourteen rest. Yep, that's the one. In fact, I think we were the first game company to actually book a booth because we are still on the only logo they show. So yeah. Yep. I guess it's the internet, like the internet equivalent of yelling first, except it's like a convention. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is actually going to be our first time presenting at a con convention. So we are, so we'll probably like you can probably recognize us from like the art, the confused look on our faces and stuff like that. <laughs> so let's let's go back to. Oh yeah, and you might have noticed that your character changed slightly because they are. You, this is the second character you play as. Uh, she's called Asha. She is like a big thing, big deal, whatever. But yeah, you you know more in the plot. Like in, yeah. Now that's like the worst introduction I could give to Asha. But yeah, she's like a big deal. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. kind of big deal. <laughs> she's the tall snakes, and she he rules. <laughs> oh yeah, Rocketeer. Yeah, we were actually going to show you this area. This is the new temple area. Yep, this is the temple area. Yeah, since we don't have proper collisions yet, I can actually go all the way in, even though I'm not supposed to, by riding the collision wave. There you go. Yeah, this sounds like a good place to, uh, like you know, like you do the whole Titanic thing where I'm the king of the world, that kind of. Thing. But yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah. I think uh, typically the 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 images people see of ancient India. I think this is the first one we have, which is like which can be recognizable. You can show somebody this, and they'll be like, yeah, this is ancient India, all right. Mhm. Mm yeah, the rooftops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the part where we we say our game is actually Assassin's Creed. This is like all part of the rooftop climbing mechanics. 
<laughs> Gbox system. Yeah. Also have a bunch of other levels. <laughs> There were totally supposed to be two pillars over here, but like because of a rendering bug, they are not showing up. So for next time, but yeah, for now, yeah, these are some other. These are the uh, the houses of more well-off people compared to uh, like the poor houses which you saw earlier. So yeah, this is the more uh, like high class. This is the more high class joint of this area. Oh my God! This is. Oh, we don't. Oh, we don't have the interior levels actually. That's why. But yeah, this is a house. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the part where you have like city walls, and this is this is the slum area. Uh, Which is the Templar and which is the Assassin? Maybe both of them are Templars and Assassins. It would make sense in the larger meta narrative, you know. <laughs> um, I think I hit too close to home, right? I think, but it might happen in one of the Assassin's Creed games. Uh, so, yeah. how far do we feel we have gotten now? Uh, in terms of art. Uh, Mick has just one more tile set to draw. After that, yeah. uh, after that, he has a bunch of levels to draw, but uh, that those won't require new tile sets. They would just require the same tile sets arranged in a different way. So, in so technically, I would say in art we have gotten about 60 60 percent of the way there. Uh, we do have a lot of sprites left to draw, but yeah, but we are thinking of getting some help. In that department, so there's nothing final yet, but yeah, the sprites are the main area which, like, I feel is the which most of the after a month or so that's where we focus on, and obviously polishing the stuff, adding some motion to the levels. Hmm. I could have said, gone the David Cage route and said we had to add emotions, but yeah, actually it's just like moving things. Uh, <laughs> Kalen says we are so well off we can just keep our supplies laying out in a yard it's no big deal <laughs> yeah like actually some of that stuff is because some of that stuff is because uh, there will be people standing next to them and like we have, we'll have some scenarios and stuff there but yeah yes uh, and yeah, it's, a, it's not actually supplies so much as just you know What's yeah. left after the supplies were jacked? Yeah, random junk. Like, and and this is uh, the same slums level which you might have seen before, but slightly revamped. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like usually. Lady on the cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's actually uh, sitting quite well compared to this guy because this uh, this guy, like the one I'm standing right here, he's supposed to face the other way. So it kind of looks like he's sitting on the steps, but right now it looks like he's like showing off his acrobatics and like sitting the reverse way in some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Werewolf actually says if you've made made people cry, you've reached David Cage's level of emotions because that's the only one he's aware of. So cry due to bad plot or cry due to like actual crying? Because I am not sure which one I have experienced more. <laughs> yeah, even like this lady is supposed to face the other way. Yeah, that's like the thing. Like a lot of people are facing the wrong way at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was just being crowded and sitting in the corner. Nine. Uh, hang on a minute. Yeah, this is the one where it's the black market. Yeah. So this is this is a nice demonstration of the people who are all staring at some thing in the horizon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like that. That's kind of feels like yeah. 
they, because their eyes move so it feels like they, they steal a quick glance in your direction and they're like oh my god act, act as if you haven't seen them so you're probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Shifty, I think Mr. Shifty isn't actually now. We fixed the problem, right? The shifting problem. Oh, not that one. Oh, right. There's, there's another one. Oh, yeah. There's this temple as well in the middle. That wasn't there before. My god, all of our team is sleep deprived at this moment. Yeah, this is another temple. Yeah, this is a smaller one and we'll have a like, like mini scenario kind of thing here. So, uh, yeah, that this is the progress we made. We have, uh, <laughs> we probably have like David Cage, like just the whole film director shtick that he did in like that. What was that game? Fahrenheit, yeah. We just have film director David Cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have added the tents and uh, no, no voice acting. Yeah, we can't afford voice acting. Uh, and another thing we have modified in the slums is that they, the houses look more colorful. Like the last time you might have seen them, all of them were the same color. This time they have, um, like some of them are brown, some of them are white, some of them are grey, some of them are red, something like that. But yeah. Yeah, and also a whole lot of cracks and broken edges and things like yeah. that also added absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Just to add some detail, but uh, can't really tell that much from the live stream, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get all characters, like all all the male characters are voiced by Ratskan and the female characters are voiced by Ellen Page. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll sell a million copies or something. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we'll. Uh, this is a process that we will like. We keep on doing. Uh, we'll iteratively improve. Like if if Mick stumbles upon something that uh, like makes something look way better. So what Mick does is that he'll also simultaneously improve the previous levels, which you have. Yeah, I, I think there will be small Im improvements uh, all the way up to the end. Yep. where we actually ship the game because there's a, all sorts of really small things that you can change and then take a look at the levels and hey, it all looks a lot better. Yeah. And of course, uh, we need to add a whole lot of uh, dynamic things because and I was actually all the levels are... You yeah, know, go ahead, go ahead. All the levels are completely static assets right now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Ratskan faking an Indian accent. Yeah, this has to be a thing. Yeah, we'll get Ratskan <laughs> faking the, the Indian accent and the rest of the cast of the Big Bang Theory, apart from the Indian guy. I want to hear the Ratskan voice. <laughs> well, uh, see, the thing about Nagas is that because of their physiology, and uh, also some aspects of the culture, which we'll get into more in the backstory. They speak mostly with the cadence like this. Well, hello, human. <laughs> Skeksis are your friends. <laughs> yeah. It's an actual quote from the game, by the way. <laughs> I think almost so, everything I say during these streams is a lie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You've hired the voice actors from Twinson's Odyssey. <laughs> or, sh or like the, the old Shenmue dubs. 
<laughs> we but have an NPC that communicates entirely. We we'll have an NPC that communicates entirely via dubstep. Or like all Nagas just when they say dubstep comes out of their mouths. So because all the cool kids are in dubstep. So yeah, we'll we'll grab some of that Dub cool smother. kid. <laughs> some of that cool kid market. Yeah, that's what we we are aiming for. <laughs> Oh, so we're going for the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, in the 90s appeal. <laughs> yeah, we are extreme. We, 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 we name our game to something like Unextreme or something. To, to show that we are legit. Oh, like this, this stream is pretty much just us failing at something or the other, right? Like Ratskan fails at uh, like accents and I fail at sounding cool and uh, Ross fails to like keep a proper connection just keeps cutting out I, I was gonna say I, I failed the link areas together you teleport back in even though <laughs> I've tried to fix that okay so operating by the uh, western filmmaking school of accents <laughs> the Naga actually would not have uh, feed British accents for the most part for the most part they'd have like working class accents <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is the kind of, mm, uh, but yeah, like I was actually thinking of uh, discussing what we were discussing earlier related to combat. Uh, so, backers, would you? Uh, let's say there were two choices. Like you know, the one one choice was that uh, like there's the, what I'm suggesting is that there's a combat scenario in chapter three where you as a priest are attacked by a, a, a thug. Uh, to, in order to steal the stuff that you are supposed to distribute from the poor. So now what, what we can do is, uh, like since you are a priest, should we have something like the walking dead where you have to execute actions in panic and there is a timer in your conversations? Or do you want something that has mechanical uh, depth and complexity? So where you have, yeah let him start is actually a choice. Like if you die, yeah, that's like one of our USPs. Like if you die somewhere, you die, and like the that the next chapter starts. So there won't be like a game over screen and then retry or something like that. So if, so if you fail the combat scenario, you die, and the next chapter starts. The question I'm asking is yeah, that's the whole yeah. So the question I'm asking is, uh, would you be open to uh, playing like the Walking Dead style action sequences, or would you rather have a consistent combat mechanic kind of thing where like every combat scenario plays by the same rules and just adds like new moves or new enemies or something like that just just type your suggestions and like let us know because at this point this is kind of like pretty sure by next month we'll have our combat system finalized so so just let us know what you think and like, would you would you prefer to have the Walking Dead style uh, uh, combat sequences for the play for the characters who are not well versed in combat, or would you rather have a consistent combat scheme, but maybe be reflected by like the player being slow to strike or slower to move or something like that? Okay, consistent mechanic, I think. Uh, yeah, Rocketeer, we'll get. Uh, Ratskan, can you answer Rocketeer's question? Mm, yes. So, the um, thing about the Naga and, and Bimra and their social scale is Naga society is very much a meritocracy. The idea is that a Naga will step up to an issue and like something that interests them or that they think they'll be good at they'll sort of make a run at it and if they're really good at it they show an aptitude and there's no one currently holding that position then they sort of they, they very seamlessly sort of become the go-to in that community for it and what i actually sort of when i was thinking of why there'd be immigrants from naga the naga empire which is supposed to be depicted as fairly prosperous to bimra which was having troubles I actually drew inspiration from a, a social experiment, well, I say social experiment, but it's really more of a biological experiment, which, I, I can't remember the exact name of it, but I think of it as rat, the rat heaven experiment. And I think it was actually for, 
suppose testing unrelated things, but they discovered that if you give rats a environment in which they don't die, in which they're all happy, the younger rats, like the rats that are born en masse from this very prosperous rat society, are actually screwed because the old rats are still alive, they still hold all the social roles, and they don't want the new rats around because the new rats, you know, don't bring anything to the table. So what ended up happening in the Naga society was over the past hundred years or so, lifespans have been gradually, uh, and not so gradually, uh, expanding as medical advancements are happening at a sort of a punctuated equilibrium rate. Where like it, it's it's uh, even right now Naga are living much longer than usual. But, uh, yeah, rather just uh, the fact that the Naga Empire is Sanitation. actually quite prosperous compared to the human empire. Yeah. So they are in a state yeah. well, of I say, relative. I say medical advancements. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean like they are in an yeah. age of relative prosperity compared to the human empire at this point of time. Yeah. There, there's very much that. Uh, I think it's been more <laughs> prosperous lately as sort of new trade has brought in things that make them live longer. And also, there there have been some sanitation improvements in the Naga cities, which have yeah. expanded lifespans. So, the, the bottom line is that, yes, the new Naga want to be politicians. You know, there, there, there are plenty of rooms for them in the social ladder, but mostly at the bottom. And there are plenty of Naga who want to be like politicians and leaders of men and that sort of thing. So they've been all heading out towards Bimra because they, Bimra and the Naga Empire worked out a deal, which, on paper and from a couple, from a you know, hundred miles away, looked really good, and it looked like a, there'd be a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. Turns out, not so much. Yeah. Turns out, it actually kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is actually a Kellen says that uh, the Naga in the city are actually jobless millennials. I'm not exactly aware of what millennial means, but I think it's like people who are young at this point of time, right? Yes, that's what it means. Millennials mean like people who belong to the generation from the turn of the millennium. Oh, you mean the generation after the, the generation X that was the 90s or something? Yes, basically, yeah. Yeah, well, like that's a tough act to follow. Like you're after the extreme generation, the spelled with an X. Like it's a very tough act to follow that just so I can sympathize actually I might be part of the generation too so yeah I'm sorry but anyway yeah that, that's the kind of problem like India we don't really deal with like I know what boomers are they're the, they're the big ones in left for dead but <laughs> the thing is baby boomer is a phenomenon which is exclusive to America well, not, <laughs> probably not exclusive to America, certainly not exclusive as a concept, but when we talk about too. that, we're referring to a phenomenon which occurred in the United States, specifically, where after World War II, uh, people came back and started huge families. Oh. And the children, like, that are the result of those families, are called, usually called the baby boomers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that's it. Okay, that's Most of nice, us there are I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't really... Like, yeah, this is like... Yeah, I am being coached on American politics, like, on live stream. So I don't really know how to react. <laughs> so yeah. So I don't know, thanks Obama or something. Whatever, stereotypical. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's what happens after, like, it, the, the, the final screen of the game is the city in flames, corpses in the streets, <laughs> disease, plague, rioting, and just thanks Obama scrolls across the screen. <laughs> As the image, the background image fades, it, like, dissolves into a picture of New York. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just... Man, I really want to actually... Spoiler warning. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I want to make a mod or something like this now. Thanks, <laughs> so Naga. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, Naga actually sounds like an Irish Naga, you know, like, that speaks in a stereotypical <laughs> Irish accent. <laughs> I think that actually sounds like the name of one of the Ranver supremacists. Is that you meet one named Killian Onaga? 
Oh my god, that guy's name called Killian. Pretty sure that's like, that's evil right there. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, like, at the same time, what Jaren said, like, social commentary, yeah, that's like, yeah, that's why I think you should avoid, uh, like, drawing po- parallels to American politics as then, because, like, most of the the world building was done by me and I am not aware of like <laughs> what the American politics yes. political situation is so I won't read too much into the metaphors from an American point of view hey, and to be clear I'm drawing all of the social like anytime I include like social conflict or like political conflict I'm basing it either on, ex- on like, that's kind psychology of experiments self-work. or world history <laughs> basically so <laughs> none of this is none of this comes from american politics yeah. possibly it's influenced in part by american politics on a subconscious level but yeah i mean i tend level. to draw directly from inspiration and to be able to point to my inspiration and it's not contemporary oh. yeah that was what well, yeah krenin is qualified yeah that that was that that clarifies things a bit because i was thinking like uh, the people who were born in like 2000 they'll be like 14 or something so I don't know if they need jobs already. Like I'm not sure. You can start working at 14 in America. I'm not sure. But yeah, whatever. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's another thing on the bingo uh, card. Like we are, we have also completely like American politics 101. So yeah. All of the internet on the stream. <laughs> Oh, and also, yeah, for the people who are late in the stream, yeah, this is the the world map. Like, if you are, if you need help or you need uh, exact directions, you can enable this map overlay, which fills in dynamically depending on how many levels you've shown. And if you are a lower type person who'd rather chart their way themselves or something, then you can hide this overlay and and go back to the sort of pretty looking world map that was been there before. So yeah, and like you'll also have quest markers and stuff later on once we actually get to adding the quest markers. So yeah, that slowly by slowly, yeah, at this point of time, uh, we like I said before, we are about sixty percent done. So now the it's the phase where, <laughs> yeah, that's actually cool. Yeah, now that you mention it, yeah, it does look like that. At least the art style, yeah. Because it's kind of like drawn on parchment kind of look that we were going for. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, now that I think about... <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we going to see anything about casts? Yep. Won't be a ancient Indian game without it. But yeah, you are seeing... Uh, you are going to see... Uh, like people's cast have an effect on what they uh, think of you, how they talk to you, and that kind of thing. Yeah, there's no, uh, yeah, there's no quantifiable cast system that you can manipulate as such. Like, there's no, uh, it's not like you can choose to be a paladin or you can choose to be a knight. You know, it's not that kind of thing. Yeah, no farmers actually. Yeah, this is a big thing because uh, in in the game's lore. The Naga were traditionally uh, like the earlier royal regime. They bought the Naga as traders in order to, uh, what's the term, revitalize their economy. I'm not sure, Ratskan, maybe you want to help me out on this. But yeah, like. Uh, sorry, on what issue specifically? Uh, yeah, Mr. Starker is asking do all Naga live in the city, no farmers? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so what I was saying was it, that, yeah. They're- they, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. There's an established sort of peasant... Well, for one thing, there's an already sort of an established peasant uh, class in the society. Uh, most... The, there's actually an issue where a lot of farmers are being consolidated and are sort of a bit abandoned, so there's a, there's, a, there's a surplus of peasants. And plus, none of the Naga came to the city to be a, to farm dirt. They could do that back home. Yeah, so... A lot of them were too proud. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's kind of the whole problem. Like what Rocketeer just said, I was sort of wondering what kind of work there is to be done for the Naga. So yeah, that's kind of the thing. They don't have jobs at the moment. Yeah, a lot of them came to the city to establish businesses yeah. uh, because they had trade connections back home. But yeah. things kind of broke down, and it's 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 ambiguous. And everybody and like a lot of people in the game will have a different account of exactly what happened. Yeah, but. A lot of Naga believe that there was actually kind of a conspiracy against them, yeah. which isn't quite as crazy as it sounds. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I, I'm, sort of actually, that's kind of, I'm going to stop you here because we don't want to spoil this stuff entirely. We'd rather you figure it out during the game because, yeah, if you just spell it out, yes. right now, it kind of like spoil the surprise, I'd say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they started, they stopped accepting coins and started trading in babies. They were like, yeah. <laughs> and they would eat the baby in front of the the parent who bought that as currency. Yeah, eating babies. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, if you're wondering why I just said, yeah, eating babies uh, in concurrence with Arvin's point, it was actually because somebody opened the door, and I was uh, attempting to show them what we get up to here. It was accurate. I mean, that was, in fact, what we were discussing, but... <laughs> yeah, it would be funny if you had to, like, collect, you just had your purse, and, like, to trade in Nagas, in the Naga chapter, you just had a backpack full of babies, and you would lunch <laughs> and be like... <laughs> but yeah, okay, that too. Let's see. Let's uh, so, yeah, I think, yeah, uh, okay, so we'll have like five to ten minutes more of the streaming. So, if you have any final questions, yeah, we'll take them and then. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you might actually. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, do we have? Oh yeah. I also I went to a conference that's called NGD Seats in India. I don't know if you saw the interview. But it was basically like the reporter. Asking me five minutes on why I wasn't making free to play or freemium games. So, yeah, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Sashlo. Secret developer room with all of you in it. Actually, Mick floated the idea of uh, having a credit room. With not just the developers but also the backers yes. in it. So yeah, depending on uh, we want to do that because what Mick suggested was very cool. Uh, but yeah, we might. Yeah, that depends on kind of the time and stuff. Like I'm not sure if like we were to come up to you guys and say, hey guys, game is going to be delayed for a month because we have to program in the Easter egg backer level. So yeah, I'm not sure if like yeah at this moment we are still figuring out the logistics. Is what I would say, because the levels actually are not the big deal. Like we, it's the sprites that are kind of the big deal. Man, I should totally make the next game where you are like a flower in ancient India or something. That would really like simplify a lot of the drawing. But wait, no, you play those guys already did that. The journey guys, that game company. Damn it. Yeah, yes. pl pl flowers. Flowers sway in the wind and move. You you want something stable like the rock. <laughs> oh yes, wait. No, no animations. You're just a rock. Oh, <laughs> oh. I was actually thinking of like since I grew up watching the WWE, I was thinking you were the rock in ancient India, rather than a rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you smell what the nugget has been cooking? <laughs> yes, human babies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, oh my god, are there, are there underground Naga cage fights? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we might actually just yeah, that's the kind of easy approach to take. Just recycle other areas and sprites, yeah. Yeah, but if you are pressed for time, that's what we'll do. Yeah. I particularly like like these. Like these are probably the most favorite things in my uh what do you call that? In the new city. These these arches that are the window. It's just just a personal favorite. I'm pretty sure the rest of the developer team has some other favorites, but yeah. <laughs> it, no, but like what I think what they meant was like the Nagal are underground, you know, like in a cool sort of way. Like they are underground, they are into the streets, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the about the culture. Yeah, the like, Nagal. There's a funny thing about culture in which, like, there's all, almost anywhere you go, uh, like, you'll find people saying our culture is the best, like, we have the richest culture. So, that kind of thing is like will be very made very evident. Like, when you play this game, the Naga will think the humans are just artless kind of savages, and you know, and the humans will think the same. So, that's kind of the thing which, like, which I, I'm pretty sure we'll have. It's like Lots of people saying their culture is the best. Which mm -hmm. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of our developer teams, team meetings are just us making fun of each other's national references or something. <laughs> like national <laughs> reputation? Yeah, that's basically yeah. what we do. <laughs> Make you like the winner. <laughs> What did Ross say uh, last time? Does it does make me the winner for having country basically has my identity? Yeah. The problem is that Canadians are just so easy going, you know. Like they're like you can you come up to them and you say, Hey guys, your culture sucks and they're like, Oh sorry or like something like that. <laughs> you can't stay angry at them because they're just so easy going. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry my culture sucks. <laughs> uh uh, Nagapolis, yeah, this was actually like, this was planned uh, during the Kickstarter, having the Naga sit, uh, city, but yeah, this since like the Naga city is just entirely, uh, yeah, thanks, <laughs> the real Chibi, yeah, uh, yeah, and another thing about, yeah, what, what I was saying about the Naga city was that it is a very huge endeavor, so that's why we actually like, since we didn't hit the stretch goal, we didn't, uh, we decided to drop it pretty early on because uh, <laughs> yeah because uh, having to another city is like basically doubling the entire workload you have right there so so that would uh, with the same amount of people that would push our development basically to twice of what we have because you can just have a city right you mean like you also need dialogue, we also need characters, sprites, it's like the whole package. Oh, like not the player characters going there in the game. But yeah, yeah, otherwise there are a lot of mentions to their uh, city and such. Hmm, that's a question which uh, Ratskan might know better than me because I I just, I don't know. Like, did there have been relations in the past, not recently because uh, like, uh, the whole kind of situation here is that the previous dynasty, they were very friendly and they kind of ex uh, extended the olive branch. There was a lot of to and fro trade for a while. But then the regime changed rather abruptly. And since then, things have been very cold. There's probably been very few human traders who actually go to the Naga cities, right? That's gone. Oh, yes, absolutely. Like, in fact, the thing is. Most of the agreement was predicated on, you know, that there were some, you'd be some human traders, but they actually didn't really want human immigrants in their cities. Like, yeah. they, they, they wanted it to mostly be a one way thing. Yeah. And since at that time the economy was such that, uh, like, they pretty much had to accept it. And plus, like, military speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, you can see that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll take a final round of questions before we say uh, goodbye for today. <laughs> what does viviparous mean? Like it's one of those words which I have heard for the first time in my entire life. Which word again? Uh, Rockety is viviparous. Viviparous. Like I don't even know how to pronounce it. Oh yeah, zipper. There you go. Oh, so that's what it means. No, now, I'm pretty sure they have eggs and stuff, so they don't really give life birth. And stuff. Uh, these are the nagas. Uh, as you can see, they are, these are actually both male and female nagas, but like there's there's a lot less difference. Like we wanted to uh, go away from the traditional fantasy fantasy design, but it's like everyone looks like. Like the, all the males are human males and all the males are female males, but just the face is different. There's like horns and stuff. So there's there's slight differences in the uh, their the their heads. If you look closely, I'm not sure if it's visible in the stream, but there's slight differences. Not very not very many, but yeah. <laughs> so I guess we're probably looks like we're pretty much running down to done for today. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, and yeah, they do wear shirts just to look rads. Like it's 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 a it's like the '90s where like wearing the the kind of open type jacket was cool. So they just do that. Like if you see if you see their sprite idol animations, they're like. Moving to a beat, they're like head banging, but a little more. <laughs> Even the crystal boxing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to you as well for tuning in and and listening to uh, whatever the hell we just talked. Ah, uh, no, they don't have. They don't walk. They don't have feet. Like. They they are serpent esque in the so that's how they <laughs> yeah I think yeah we can all agree that that yeah <laughs> it was better than the eighties <laughs> yeah but that's that that kind of says a lot about the nineties you know when the best thing you can come like when, when the best thing you can come up with. For them, is that it was at least it was in the eighties, but yeah. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, we are done for the day. Yeah, thanks for watching and tune in next week. And our next up update is going to be uh, pretty interesting for you guys because we'll talk about how we go about designing the levels. So yeah, so yeah, see ya, bye. <laughs>